Hugh Atchison is a star chef with a Canadian accent and huge hankering for southern food. He is one of the new rock star chefs who is crazy cool and nuts about southern cooking. Ham hocks, mustard greens and grits. He creates adventurous recipes in his three restaurants in the state of Georgia. He appears as a judge in Bravo's Top Chef Season 9, and his first cookbook is called A New Turn in the South. It is my pleasure to welcome Hugh Atchison to Studio 4 to tell us more. Well, thanks for having me here. So, an Ontario lad... Uh, I know. ...who was studying political philosophy... Yes. ...a little Plato... Yes. ...now plates things. Yes, we've gone from Kierkegaard to better things in life to me. You know, and back I to Kierkegaard, maybe, right. sometimes in yeah. the kitchen, it you makes, know. It makes it all make sense in the end. So, mm -hmm. you know, I went to Concordia for a couple of years and dropped out. And, and it, you know, I always had this amazing gift of having worked in great restaurants since I was very small. Um, you know, some not so great, but some great, mm -hmm. like really seminal restaurants in Ottawa and Montreal. And you know, eventually I just figured out that that was my end endless curiosity. Sure. You know, I could learn about food every day of my life and be very happy. Did you go to so, chef school? You know, I never did, no. So self-taught? So, taught by great chefs in great kitchens. And one of the ten best chefs in the United States of America, according, according to Food and Wine magazine, uh, and uh, others, uh, James Beard and some, say yes. you're pretty good at what you do. We, we, we love what we do, and it shows, and I think that that's the best thing. And the do. restaurant biz. Uh, the Five and Ten? Yeah, Five and Ten is my first restaurant that we opened up 12 years ago in Athens. Then we've got another one called The National in, in Athens. In Athens, Georgia. Yeah. Not and in then, Greece. No, not in Athens, Greece. <laughs> the economy there is just not supportive <laughs> not of so restaurants good. these days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we've got a big one in Atlanta that we opened up a year and a half ago called Empire State South. What good names. Yeah, Empire State South is an old play on the, uh, the original nickname of the state of Georgia, which it was Empire State mm -hmm. of the South. And that was to position Georgia as the economic and cultural right. hub of the South after the Civil War. What is the essence of Southern cooking? You know, the truth in Southern cooking. I think that Southern food has gotten a bad name and a much maligned name over the years mm -hmm. as being something that's lard, rich, and uh, you know unhealthy for you. And you know, and in the, this yeah, day we age, fry everything. Right, we fry everything. <laughs> and I don't think that's true. I think it's an amazing agrarian area that's been a uh, community celebration mm -hmm. of food for a really long time. It's the most documented food history in, the, in North America. And we can look to it a lot for for how people used food in different ways. Mm -hmm. And the beautiful beautiful thing about Southern food is rich and poor all pretty much ate the same thing. And it's rare in any society that you find that. Mm -hmm. Not chanterelles on toast, surely. No, no. Well, I mean, they're foraged mushrooms. They don't have to cost mm -hmm. anything. Into mm -hmm. the woods. How, yeah. And then you forage, I'm sure, yeah, or your forage, staff yeah. forages, yeah. and you go after uh, peanuts and... Chanterelles and morels, we find those down mm. in the low country or from the Appalachians down to the coast where we are. So. And you've got a recipe in the book with ramps. Mm -hmm. I think that's in the chant. Is that in the chanterelle? No. That's We've in the risotto. Ramp. Yeah, there's a ramp in the risotto, and then there's a grilled ramp plate. Ramps are kind of wild alliums. They look like wild green onions or wild leeks. They and taste a little garlicky, don't they? They do. Little they're pretty bit. pronounced flavor, but they're really good. Mm. To me, they're totally addictive. So, for somebody who has never had a grit, or grits. Right. What are grits? White grits are nixtamalized corn. So it's corn that's gone through a lye soaking process, an mm -hmm. alkaline process, to puff out uh, the grain. And then they're dried and ground into, into grits. So the closest thing would be a hominy uh, that we mm -hmm. see, or pos in pozole and things like that. And then other grits are just slightly coarser grind of yellow corn, usually, um, that's just slightly coarser than a polenta would be. Okay, but like a polenta, a little right. bit, or so, like... You know, um, Cream of wheat. Right, exactly. I mean, every culture. <laughs> but it's not wheat. It's every corn. culture has its pap, its porridge, and mm -hmm. grits are the one of the south. You know, up here, we, I did grow up with cream of wheat at the cottage and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So you know, that's. Well, where uh, was the cottage? Yeah, yeah on Lake Simcoe, north, north of Toronto. Oh, in Simcoe. Yeah, well, I've been yeah. to Simcoe. Yeah. So was Peter Zofsky at the Simcoe. Yes, that's right. Yeah, and the Red Barn and all of those yeah. places. So uh, back to uh, southern cooking. Uh, those are very little fish you brought. Yes. They're little, little tiny anchovies, marinated mm -hmm. anchovies with mm -hmm. some root beer and grapefruit. You know, we're trying to were teach people. Were those fresh and then you marinated no, them? No, those they weren't. Came those out are of a can. like Spanish bocarones. Um, and yeah. it, this is just a really simple play on what I like to see in abundance where we are in the season of the winter. So then we've got a roasted beet and carrot salad with pulled parsley and a little cumin vinaigrette and 
house made feta, mm -hmm. and then I've got braised pork belly with a little citrus salad and, and napa cabbage. Um, so really simple pre pre preparations overall. We're all about sort of celebrating seasonality and what's around us, and we're really invested, um, just like Dr. Izzo was, in the idea of communities mm -hmm. making a little bit mm -hmm. of difference all the time in food. And it doesn't, I just want to take the inconvenient route just a little bit in food for people. Why not? So you eat locally if you can. We can, yeah. If you can. can. Those which, are beautiful grapefruit, which we can by the, the way. Yeah. Took all the little skin off and all of that. We didn't want that, you know. No, don't no. want that. Sticking in your teeth. Mm -hmm. And is there, when you drizzle a vinaigrette mm -hmm. in the south, Right. I know you've got one in the book. It's a Serrano chili vinaigrette mm -hmm. or something. Yeah. Yum. With a watermelon salad. Yeah, that's great. I mean, and, the, and that's the poignancy of southern food, which is right. it's very immediate. It's very close. Uh, you know, the, uh, the concept of farm mm -hmm. to table is something that's used mm -hmm overall too much probably as a term but this is the concept that we're really close to our farms and they're right there and they're year-round yeah. operations and they do well but you know you can immerse yourself in any foods community and around Vancouver you know going to the Granville Granville Island and going sure. to the market there it was wonderful this time of year mm -hmm. even the abundance of what's out there so you know all that I'm asking for people in the book to do is kind of figure out what that means to work in the cadence of your community of food Mm. So. And one of the foods that crosses the border, deviled eggs. The deviled eggs, yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Who doesn't love a deviled I, egg? Everybody does. And they're so simple, but, you know, everybody thinks that they're, you know, they're going to take a lot of time. They're not going to peel well, so I'm not going to get frustrated. We're not going to do that. So there are a lot of hints in the book on how to make mm -hmm. it a lot easier for you. The one hint I thought was hilarious is how do you center the yolk in an egg? Right. Or a deviled egg so that the yolk part, the yellow part, is right in the middle of the white part. Right. Yeah, yeah. And you said you lay the egg on its side. Yeah. For, a for while. how long? Uh, just just to let it relax for a little bit, and then cook it on its side, and then it centers itself in there. So yeah. So you have to cook it on its side. You can't lay yeah. it on its side and throw it in yeah. the pot. Yeah. It's no. much more challenging than to cook it standing up. So it's it's, it's pretty. I guess they do go process. on the side yeah. when they're yeah. when you're not supposed yeah. to boil them. I know right. you're supposed to soft cook it. Yes, egg. that's right. But if you do it on the side, yeah. put it. I'm trying it. You're good, do It'll it. It'd be the science experiment. Yes, that's right, you should do right? it. Right? Yeah. And do you put uh, Wickles relish in your eggs? We don't is it in the South. Yeah, no, I, I don't know which relish that is. But I don't no. either, some kind yeah. of pickle relish. Yeah, we use it, I mean, there's chow chow and pickle lily and things like that, mm -hmm. that you see garnishing, things like that. But we pretty, keep it pretty much straight up and want the deviledness in it, which is a little spice. Of course, like? Yeah, uh, you know, usually cayenne. Cayenne, so, yeah. a little spice. Now, in here, there is uh, not your mama's Brussels sprouts. Right, right. You shave a raw Brussels sprout, and you know, it's that, delicious? That's a salad that is in there as well. There's a Brussels sprout salad. But what we do with Brussels sprouts when we're cooking them is we core them like they were a larger cabbage and take off individual leaves. What I'm trying mm. to fight against is just that mushy, overcooked sort of yeah, sensation yeah. that a lot of Brussels sprouts get. And kind of, I think I was put on this earth to convince you to love vegetables you wouldn't yeah. like otherwise. Okra and Brussels sprouts being my main hurdles. Main thing, and uh, we love Brussels sprouts at our house yeah. because we don't cook them too much. Right. And we had like horseradish and balsamic mm -hmm. and treats and Yum. all of that, and yeah. people don't know. Or you can just, uh, well, you're the chef, but you uh, saute them with a little garlic and pine nut. And it takes takes no time at all, and then mm. get the pine nuts in their very last, and maybe a squeeze of lemon and good right. olive oil and, and mm. simple salt and pepper, and that's it. And you've got something that's Great. Yeah, and the okra thing. Okra. okra. Cook it fast. Don't let Tell all that Tell me what okra shells. is. The little, the kind of... Yeah, they're little seed little pods. Seed and pods. you sit, find them in Asian cooking a lot, but you also right. find them, there. you know, the most popular variety of okra in the past little while was developed at Clemson University. It's called Clemson Spineless Okra. And it's not woodsy or spiny. It's very tender. Mm. Um, you know, and you want to pick them when they're young, and you get beautiful red ones and green ones. And then you just really want to cook it really quickly. We just slice them down the center and then just flash them in a really hot olive oil, but not deep frying them, just about a trace just amount a of olive oil. shot. And that's uh, it. So in Georgia... Mm -hmm. If you're having a birthday, yeah, and you're going to the party, right? What's a typical birthday dinner a per in the Georgia? You know, it depends on the time of year. I, I mean, suppose, you know, yeah. we just we like um, in Georgia we like a good spread. You know, the typical Southern meal begins with pickles and relishes and breads, and then there's a big spread. And you know, I find that in this day and age and uh, health consciousness that protein count is going down, protein size is going down, and so we want to show off mm -hmm. the abundance of vegetables that are around us all the time. Yeah. So there's going to be collard greens, there's going to be Brussels sprouts, there's going to be roasted carrots, 
maybe a carrot salad with beets like that. And, and some Something kale. Kale, yeah. yeah, beautiful kale right now. Mm -hmm. so You're going to live forever eating yes, we're all trying. that kale. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, do you say A in Georgia still? Uh, they, they, yeah. They think well, you're yeah. funny, don't they? They do think I'm funny. I have one <laughs> eyebrow and say A. Mm -hmm. Will you stay there? Yeah, I mean, right now, it, I will stay wherever I feel like it's my home and my community. Mm -hmm. And for a long time, Ottawa and Montreal was that. My dad still lives in Ottawa, my mom still lives in Toronto. We love it there. But you know, I've been in the States for a long time and it's a wonderful community around Athens. It's a different pace of life. It's really interesting in the South and it's got a lot of really interesting history to it. Yeah, and it's sure fun to does. look into every day. And it's always a little slower. It is. The pace there's is. A, there is a pace that's There that's is a nice. pace. Yeah. It's not the Canadian pace. That's right. No. <laughs> no. You guys are hearing up you. here these days. <laughs> I know. I thank you. Yeah. A new turn in the South. Southern flavors reinvented for your kitchen. Hugh Atchison, our guest. And remember, you can catch all of our conversations on YouTube or follow us on Twitter at Fanny Studio 4.